trying to keep my heart rate down because I about <laughs> fired everybody in the room. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So let's get started. It's uh, season three, episode two. I know. Which is right on. Yes, I'm let's, excited. I'm excited. I'm excited started. to hear everything. I know. Let's get started with the... Uh, so you're going to have to do a lot of editing on the Adobe in the beginning. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. okay. Simple stuff. We'll get started with our video, which comes from a TED Talk today. Looking at it, an object, no matter how illuminated... Oops, sorry. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I lied. Invisible. Invisible, yeah. Invisible killer. So many invisible killers, I know. <laughs> Radon wakes up every morning and chooses violence. Yep, exactly. It does. Exactly. On a quick question, have you seen Aeon Flux with Charlize Theron? You, you already know the answer. Oh, they were <laughs> they were graphic novels. Oh, I think okay, they're okay. like manga or... Oh, manga. Okay, yeah. okay. Maybe I've heard of it, but... Yeah, it I'm was pretty sure. famous in like the Zero Zeros. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Silent killer. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean like radon. Yeah, yeah. Aeon Flux. <laughs> Aeon Flux was like, if I remember the plot, I don't even know why we're talking about this. Uh, if I remember the plot, she was like a clone of herself. Oh, okay, okay. okay. After humanity all dies of, during a pandemic. Of, too okay. soon. Too yeah, soon. Um, uh, Way <laughs> too close scary. to comfort. That's scary. On that note, hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. Today, we're talking about radon. Radon. Yes, another episode on odorless, tasteless, and invisible gas that can kill you. Radon is not something Isis and I are actually very familiar with. While radon is emitted from the ground everywhere, it's not always emitted in a harmful amount. It really depends on where you live. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, there could be a safe amount and you'll be fine. Yes. I think everything actually emits radon, too. Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah, it's, it's in the ground. It's in the so. ground. Yeah. It just so happens that here in Houston and Southeast Texas specifically, we don't have harmful amounts of radon because we don't have any bedrock. Yeah, I feel like it's more like people up up north that really have to deal with the radon stuff. Yes. Thankfully, we're good here. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's the reason is that Southeast Texas is basically floating. Yes. Yeah. We're yeah. on clay we're, and sandy soil. We're in a swamp, yes. basically. We don't have any heart. So that's why we don't have basements. You can't dig into bedrock and build a basement here. Yeah. So that means very shallow foundations um, and even some case pier and beam foundations. And if you want to know more, you can go to our foundation episode, which is season one. Yes. Yeah, season one. Season one. Foundation. Perfect. Now, where you're going to hear the most about radon, as Isis mentioned, is in the northern part of the United States and in Canada. They actually have a really bad radon problem in Canada. Oh, wow. Yes. It's because they build homes straight into bedrock. So when they're digging out a foundation to pour a basement foundation, they're typically digging straight into the bedrock of the earth. And that's where most of the radon's coming out. Makes sense. Yes. Um, and as I mentioned, radon coming out of the ground no matter what. It's just when you dig deeper into the bedrock, it comes out in greater amounts. Greater amounts. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Sorry. Um, they have real radon problems up north and in Canada, and they've had real health consequences throughout history and into the modern day. Oh, yeah. It's not it's not something to take lightly. No. <laughs> and I think you're going to talk more about the health consequences. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'll talk more about what it does to the, the body. It's, not it's a little bit different from carbon monoxide. Yeah, a little bit different than carbon monoxide. It doesn't do the same thing at all. Um, and it doesn't come out from, of our cars. It's just, yeah. this is actually something made, the earth does to us. Yeah, it might be like something that creeps out of your foundation cracks. And 
So the Stuff earth like is the one that wakes up yeah. every day and chooses violence. Yes, it is the earth. <laughs> it won't be something coming from like... Like last time it was like your your gas stove and stuff like that. Nothing like it's that. It's the earth. It's the earth. It's yeah. The, okay. Wow. Let's figure out how we figured that out. Long. Yes. Let's figure, do it. Figured out how we figured out. Figured so, out how we figured it out. <laughs> um, they figured out yeah, that um, radon was radon in 1900. Essentially, um, that's when they named it. That's when they f- kind of coined that, oh, people are dying because of something we'll call radon okay so in the 1900s is when they like knew what it like found out what it was well they had an idea about 300 years earlier there was an idea once again just like with carbon monoxide they had people were dying mysteriously they had an idea that people were dying of something they couldn't identify okay 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 so uh, a guy named georgius agricola what a name. I know. <laughs> he was a German physician and geologist. This is nine, excuse me, 1494 to 1555. Wow. Yeah. He noticed a high frequency of fatal lung disease occurring al- among local miners. Who was mining in the 1500s? Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Like. <laughs> that's such a long time that ago. That sounds so dangerous. I right? guess mines have always existed, but like. Yeah. Bl- to actually go mining though, like. Mining that, is dangerous even today. Yeah, Didn't like, they just rescue a bunch of Chinese miners? I think so. Yeah. That stuff is scary. A 1500s mining definitely had no OSHA And if regulation. you've heard our, our other episodes, you know mining doesn't go well. Yeah. So we have another guy. His name is Paracelsus. Okay. He's Swiss. Okay. okay. And also a scientist. Nice. 1493 to 1541. He also noticed that underground miners in the Urs Mountains of Eastern Europe died from lung disease so again this is still in the 1500s those miners are dropping dead of lung disease he says it's a combination of the dust and the mystery gas that's in the mine the mystery gas gas. okay so they knew it was a gas they knew it was a gas they just didn't exactly know what it's not till 1900 that they identify it as radon okay but here in the 1500s people are they're like okay there's something going on in these mines yeah that they're inhaling that's causing their lungs to get sick yeah So in 1879, we have two physicians named Harding and Hess, and I couldn't find their first names, which is weird, but they found that the mortality rate of uranium miners who worked in Germany and Czechoslovakia to be near 75%. 75%? Yes. German miners who worked more than 10 years developed the Urs Mountain Disease, which was later identified as lung cancer. Oh, wow. So they yeah. called it mountain disease? The Urs mountain disease. The Urs mountain disease. E-R-Z. Urs. Uh, oh, may- Urs. Maybe I'm saying that wrong, but I don't know. Uh, I, it sounds right to me. Yeah. E-R-Z. The Urs, Urs mountain disease, which is just a good old fashioned term for lung cancer, apparently. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> 75% mortality rate of miners who worked in Germany and Czechoslovakia in the 1800s. Okay, then yeah that's crazy yeah so when the high school recruiter came around for that how did he how do you think he pulled you know (laughs) convinced them to do that i know that's some dark stuff that is really dark yeah that's really sad so remember 1900 is when they start calling it radon in 1921 a woman named margaret ulig was the first to just suggest that the radium emanation which is a fancy word for radon might be the cause of this lung cancer so they're calling it radon Rayton. Rayton. Yeah, good Lord. <laughs> they're calling it radon in 1900, but it's not till 1921 that they're kind of saying maybe this is the mystery, the Urs Mountain disease yeah. causing stuff. They put two and two together. Yes. And now in 1924, there was another suggestion that the lung cancer was definitely caused by radon. Okay. So 1921, uh, they have an idea. 1924, they're like, yeah, this is definitely wow. radon causing the lung cancer. So from 1500 to 1924. That is a long time. That's like 300 years. Yeah. To so figure that out. <laughs> they continue doing testing between 1924 and 1932. They find high concentrations of radon in Czechoslovakia and in Germany. Um, and that was like the final proof that, okay. that it was indeed what was causing all the mystery Urs mountain diseases um and this is very sad over half the deaths um in those areas in general not just from the miners were from lung cancer wow yeah. so people who weren't even in the mines were also Getting being exposed. affected yeah and most miners died before they reached the age of 50 that's crazy I it's know. crazy how long it took too that makes me wonder like 
what exists out there right now that we still haven't figured out <laughs> i know because 300 years that's a long time <laughs> it's a lot of time yeah and i want to point out that radon is a form of radiation yeah yeah and you're going to talk about that some more yeah a little bit more okay yeah. so i won't go too deep into that but um when we say radon we are referring to a form of radiation radiation yes all right now they figured out very quickly in the 1920s from 1500 to the 1920s that radon's probably coming from the mines right yeah it's not till it's not till the 1980s that they realized radon might be coming from the basement oh my god yeah <laughs> that's such a long time i know like all the people that were probably affected between those 60 years like it's insane so we have a story, a man named Mr. Stanley Waitress. He worked at the Limerick Nuclear Power Plant in eastern Pennsylvania. I think I've seen it before. I think I stayed in a hotel that's like across the street from it. Oh, yeah, that's it, cool. It actually looks like The Simpsons. You know, like in The Simpsons, you can always see oh, the nuclear yeah. tower, the, what is that? The react, the coolant thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah literally you walk out of the hotel and there they are. The that's two, crazy. Like, yeah, it's super <laughs> spooky. Um, high high possibility of godzilla attack yeah for sure uh anyway this man mr stanley waitress walked into his job at the nuclear power plant and set off the radiation detector and they're like whoa bro why are you radioactive because these this nuclear power plant as it turned out had no nuclear fuel in it at the time so there should have been nothing radioactive on site that's scary yeah they hadn't activated the reactor yet so Mr. Stanley Waitress walks in and he's radioactive and they're like, um, what do, yeah, yeah, what have you been doing? So what they did is they went to his house and discovered that his basement was full of radiation. Oh, my God. So not even from work. Yeah. Like, this was from his house. His house. That's crazy. I can't imagine walking into work and, like, they check you and they're like, you have a lot of radiation on you. That's scary. I would freak probably, out. You think he glowed in the dark or something? Like, right? Like, how did they figure that out? But You've seen a Geiger counter, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen Chernobyl on HBO? No, I haven't. Well, I don't even ask you. <laughs> I don't even know why I ask you. So Chernobyl is, you know what Chernobyl is, right? <gasps> Remind me. <laughs> she doesn't know what Chernobyl is. Maybe I do. It was I don't when know. a nuclear power plant melted down in Russia during okay, the actually, Soviet no, Union. I, I didn't know that. No. Okay. It's really dark and sad. Yeah, that sounds very dark. It's and sad. really really dark and sad. And um, I kept thinking about it as I was studying the history yeah. of radon. What happened at Chernobyl is obviously a lot more catastrophic than oh, just yeah. radon in the basement. But um, they use it Geiger counters a lot in that movie. So that's okay. why I asked you. Oh, OK, because they actually use them in there. Yeah. So the Geiger counter is how you see if something's radiated. Ra yeah. You know what a Geiger counter is? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I think so, yeah. Well, at least, you know, something <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's what he set off. Probably was a Geiger counter. OK. OK. Yeah. I don't know where I was. I'm just appalled. They found it in his basement. Lack. They found it in his basement. Yes. That's where we left off. <laughs> well, this sets the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania off on a mission. They're like, well, wait a second. If this guy's basement is full of radiation, how many other basements are full yeah, of radiation? He couldn't have been the only one. So they started basically testing anybody who would open their door. And this is the 80s. People open their door. Now, nowadays, we do not open our door. People were more, you know. People were murdered by serial killers who came to their door. OK. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is totally random. But have you seen the show on Netflix, Night Stalker? No, no, I have not seen it. It's really is that good. about the guy that rang the doorbell. And if you answered, he killed you. He wouldn't even ring it. He just walk into your house. That's right. He's the one that was looking for unlocked doors. Yeah, he would look for yes. unlocked doors. And I need to make Chris watch that because he always forgets to lock his office. Door. Yeah, I think it's like it's four episodes, but it is insane. It's and insane. This is the 80s when like we were yeah, just letting so anybody people didn't care anybody yeah letting vampires in we're letting everybody in like people didn't worry about those things i guess like they didn't really think something like that would happen and so that's why the commonwealth of pennsylvania was able to go around and test people's basements because yeah. we'd let anybody walk in the door yeah, in the people 80s were very willing you know they didn't think you were gonna do anything bad <laughs> so essentially they figured out that the homes with the most radiation in them were along a geological structure called the redding prong which essentially was this prehistoric dinosaur type 
thing okay that had existed but way before it's we just did. like a piece like a part of land or something yeah it's like a geological deposit okay 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 um and that, that is from uh like jurassic park type thing okay. you know it's like super old basically <laughs> yes um and that's where the radion the radon was coming out of so homes in and around that redding prong area tend to be the most radioactive okay um turns out the commonwealth of virginia found the same thing in what's called a triassic basin so again you have oh, what was okay. some sort of prehistoric ocean or you know yeah. flatland um ends up being incredibly radioactive so the epa gets involved and, you know, when the government gets involved... It's serious. Yes. It used to be anyway. I don't know yeah. what the government's doing now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're too busy fighting amongst themselves. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So, in 1986, the Virginia Department of Health conducted a statewide survey of 800 homes and found that approximately 12% of the homes that were screened for radon had elevated levels. The EPA uh, started getting nervous, and in 1992... This is how long it takes the government to do anything. We that go from 86 to 92. That's yeah. like four years before I was born. We're not going to say anything about that. <laughs> um, the EPA did a larger study in 92 of 1,600 homes. And the result of this study verified that, yes, there's something's going on in Pennsylvania and Virginia. These homes are full of radiation. Yeah. Um, interestingly, though, it's the Tidewater region of Virginia uh, was not as irradiated as the rest of Virginia. Okay. And if you had to take any type of Virginia state history in fourth grade that I did, you knew you know where the Tidewater region is. If you don't know where it is, it's really not that important. OK. All right. <laughs> Just know that it's <laughs> not full of radon. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So if you move to Virginia, pick the Tidewater region, yeah. I guess. That's so, where it's at. Yeah. So in the late 1980s, before they did their final study, the EPA established an, ex an extensive indoor radio, pro radio radon program, uh, which basically provided funding for the states to do this testing. Okay. Um, it made information available to the states to distribute to people who had homes in these danger areas. And it also established training for radon professionals and a radon proficiency program for radon testers. However, in 1998, the EPA lost funding for this. Oh, sad. Thanks, Clinton. I know. What the heck? Um, and so currently certification for radon professionals is conducted by either the National Radon Safety Board or the National Radon Proficiency Program or the American Association of Radon Safety Technicians. A lot of associations. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. OK. <laughs> so this is interesting. Um, radon doesn't just occur from the bedrock. I don't know if you're going to talk about this. It comes from the air and our water, too. I don't think I, I am going to talk about that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So like I said, radon comes out of a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where we're mostly going to get sick from it is the gas yeah. emanating. But it can also just sit in our oxygen levels. Um, and it also can come in through our water. That's insane. That's yeah. really scary. So before um, they really established how to filter water, which apparently they still don't in Michigan and parts of Houston, Texas, as it turns out, <laughs> um, you used to get radon from your drinking water. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> um, so essentially, the uh, EPA decided they were going to leave regulation for uh, basement radon levels to the state. But they did make um, radiate or radon requirements for carcinogen in water. So there is an EPA guidance on how much uh, radon can be in our drinking water. OK. Congress amended the Safe Water Drinking Act to require the EPA to solicit the National Academy of Science to evaluate the risk of cancer and validate the transfer coefficient of radon in water to air. I guess that was to evaluate the amount of radon in our oxygen. OK. And all, Congress also set a date of October 2002 to publish a final rule to, ruling for drinking water uh, standard for radon, which um, there's no follow up. So I guess we never did that. Good job. Slow clap. Slow clap for Congress. So no, essentially no. <laughs> in the 1500s, we figured out that people were mi minors were dying. Yeah. In the 1920s, we figured out why they were dying. Yes. Yes. In the 1980s, we figured out why our houses were killing us. Yeah. And the government still doesn't care. That's crazy. Because, yeah, there's, people are still affected by this. Someone today. needs to make a Reddit thread of this. Get on it. Get on it. <laughs> fix yeah. it like you fixed GameStop yeah because that's scary like I mean now there's tests and stuff to at least like before you move into a home you know you can make sure that it's not there right yeah there are and I'll talk about that yeah, in yeah. my last section but until the 1980s I mean 
your cancer rates have been falling since the 1980s. In the 1980s, you didn't have as much environmental regulation. Um, Also, people smoked more. Yes, yes. Um, So the population in general may have been more susceptible to lung cancer from the effects of smoking and secondhand smoke. Yeah, for sure. Especially because back then, like, you could even smoke inside, Mm -hmm. right? You could smoke in airplanes. Yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy. So um, it's probably a combination of humanity living healthier lifestyles and our awareness uh, and testing of radon that has really lowered the, the rate of death. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of rate of death, I'm going to I'm going to hand it over to you. Yes. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about radon, what it is and what it does to you, which is not good. No, nope. <laughs> it's not good at all. <laughs> so what is radon and is it dangerous? Hmm, I wonder. Radon is an invisible gas formed in the Earth's crust. It surrounds every one of us as part of the air we breathe. So, yeah, like yeah, you said, the it air. It is, yeah. Um, radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas that can cause lung cancer. Radon gas is inert, colorless, and odorless, just like, just like a carbon monoxide last week. Radon is naturally in the atmosphere in trace amounts. Outdoors, radon disperses rapidly, and generally, it is not a health issue outside. Um, most radon exposure occurs inside the home or school or workplace. Um, so yeah, it's not only we in your house. We always told our parents that school was going to kill us. I know. And they never listened. Mm-hmm. It's even in schools. It's in the schools. <laughs> radon gas becomes trapped indoors after it enters buildings through cracks and other holes in the foundation. Indoor radon can be controlled and managed with proven cost-effective techniques. Which I'll talk about. Yeah, Mary will go into the details about that. So uh, breathing radon over time increases your risk of lung cancer. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer in the United States. Nationally, the EPA estimates that about 21,000 people die each year from radon-related lung cancer. Only smoking caused more lung cancer deaths. That's insane. Yeah, it's the second. So smoking is, of course, number one. But this one is number two. It's right under there. That is just crazy. And do you think it's because some people live in older homes? And okay, first of all, I want to say this. I lived up north. We've established this. Yeah. Until I was 23 years old. Yeah. I lived in Ohio. I lived in Northern Virginia. I lived in Washington, D.C. I didn't even know what radon was. That's crazy. Until I became a home and well, owned. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't know either. I didn't know either. And you lived in Colorado. Yeah, I did live in Colorado. But yeah, I never knew it was a thing until I started working here. So when my brother moved into his most current house, we were looking his, in his utility closet and he had like a radon gauge. And okay. I was like, oh, my God. And it made <laughs> me wonder, like, if every house I'd ever lived in had one of those. Yeah. And I just didn't know. But I swear to God, my parents' basement did not have one. Oh, my God. That's scary. That but is scary. Also, I think we lived in the Tidewater region of Virginia. Oh, OK. So you were safe. So were I safe. think we were OK. <laughs> but no, like, seriously, I did not know about this. Yeah, me either. I didn't know about it. I didn't know how serious it was also like why don't they teach this in school right i feel like this is something like everybody should be educated about because it's like it could kill you and you won't even know till it's too late and and you're going to talk about how long it takes right i think so okay so but i just want to point out it's not like carbon monoxide so you're not going to die in your sleep yeah you're not going to die in your sleep it's more of a slow thing i feel like it's it literally gives you lung cancer so you can imagine that's not an instant yeah it's not an instant it's not like carbon monoxide in that that you'll just you just won't wake up the next day it's not it's not the same it's not the same but it's just as horrifying yeah it's just as horrifying maybe honestly maybe even a little bit more horrifying in my opinion yeah because you can't stop it yeah like you just you just deal with it you just got to deal with it terrifying so you and i are actually being exposed to radon as we're speaking yep Yes. I'll say that again. You and I are actually being exposed to radon as we're speaking. Yeah, exactly. Because, well, like I said earlier, it's in trace amounts. Like the amounts are small. They're not going to do anything unless like you're in a building or up north. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But because we're on clay and sandy soil. We're fine. We're fine. (laughs) We're okay. So one good thing about living in Houston. Oh, my God. One of the good things, because, you know, we said a lot of bad things. So did this is another sorry. So many digressions. Did you see the like last week when it was so hazy outside? Yeah, Yeah, I did. That was just another chemical random chemical week yeah the weather's been really just weird in general it's been so it was hazy like hot last week too yeah. and now it's really cold outside well the cold and rain is good because it brushes the haze away oh yeah yeah it was really hazy though yeah. i was just like what the heck is happening it's called like pm 
two point five. Is that whenever or like you get on your phone and you check the weather? It's yeah, like, unhealthy it's like don't air go quality. outside. It will yeah. literally say don't go outside. Yeah, it literally says unhealthy air quality. I'm just like, uh. <laughs> yeah, that's Houston. That's like every other day. Yeah, it happens a lot. Like I'll be checking the weather. It's like unhealthy air quality. I'm like, what does this mean? Like, what do I do? But you know what? We know it's not. It's not radon. It's not radon. It's not okay. radon. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. <laughs> so where does radon come from? So. The rocks and soil beneath our home contains traces of uranium. Over time, the uranium breaks down and forms other elements. This is called radioactive decay. Radon is one link in the decay chain of uranium. When radon gas decays, it emits radioactive radiation in the form of an alpha particle. Crazy. Okay. I have another question for (laughs) you. Have you... Do you read? Not really much anymore. I used to read so much, but I've been lacking. So there's a book that's also made into a movie, so you can watch the movie. Oh, okay, okay. It's called Radium Girls. Radium Girls. Radium Girls. And it's about the girls who would paint um, radioactive paint onto watches for soldiers in World War One, because that's oh. how their watches would glow in the dark. Okay, okay. Anyway, they would have to lick the brush dip it in the radioactive material and then paint and then do it over and over again. So they started ingesting the radioactive <gasps> material. And ultimately, these girls were very young, maybe even younger than you. Their jaws fell off and they died. Oh my God. Yeah. That is horrifying. It ate them from the inside out. Just for the sake of the watches? Yes. That is horrible. It's one of the main reasons why OSHA was actually invented. That's good. That's yeah. really sad. So like, what when you were talking about there made me think about what yeah, happened. Because they're literally just they're ingesting, ingesting it. Yeah. So do not ingest any type of radioactive uh, material. Yeah, that should be that should be obvious. But yes. <laughs> two movies for you to watch now. Um, Chernobyl, Chernobyl, HBO, and Radium Girls, which is on Netflix. Oh, it's on Netflix. It's okay, on Netflix. So it's easy then. Yes. It's easy. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're I good. I keep <laughs> interrupting you. No, these are good digressions. It's, yes. it's informational. You know, yes. we're fine. Go ahead. So, this radioactive particle is made of two protons, two neutrons. So, does radon cause cancer? Being exposed to radon for a long period of time can lead to lung cancer. Radon gas in the air breaks down into tiny radioactive elements that can lodge in the lining of the lungs where they give off radiation. So it gets it gets in there like it gets stuck in there. Like So it's the same thing of those girls who were eating it. It got into their cells yeah. in their mouth and throat and tongue. Exactly. In this case, it gets into the lining of your yeah, lungs. So when it's in there, it's basically just giving off radiation into your body. And this radiation can damage lung cells and eventually it leads to lung cancer. So cigarettes, of course, is by far the most common cause of lung cancer in the U.S., but radon is the second leading cause. And scientists estimate that about 20,000 lung Wait, cancer did you, deaths... Wait, didn't you say this already? Yeah, I said this earlier. I'm okay. just saying to get it okay. again. Okay, this but, is important, people. Yeah, this She's is important. saying it again. <laughs> yeah, so like, like they said, 20,000 lung cancer deaths per year are related to radon. 20,000, that's not, that's not a small number. So exposure to the combination of radon and cigarette smoke creates an even bigger risk. So if you're already smoking and you get exposed to radon, it's just going to be even worse for you. So that could go back to what I said, that that's probably why there were higher rates of cancer death in the 80s. Like you said, people were smoking a lot more back then. Yeah. So the combination of both is obviously deadly. Yeah. Er. Deadly er. (laughs) Yeah. So most radon related lung cancers actually develop in smokers, but... Radon is also thought to cause a significant number of lung cancers, lung cancer deaths among 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 <laughs> non-smokers in the U.S. each year. So if you've never even smoked a day in your life, you're still. That's always the saddest. Like when you read stuff about people who never smoked who get lung cancer yeah, and die. Yeah, it's like what the heck? Like I never did anything wrong. Yeah, like, I took care of myself, and I mean it's sad when anyone dies of lung cancer. Yeah, um, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. But. Oh, and this this was interesting too. Some studies have suggested that radon exposure may be linked to other types of cancers as well, like childhood leukemia. Ooh. Which is crazy. Which is also really big in the 80s. Oh yeah. Yeah, so even in children like that's insane. So it's not just lung cancer. Apparently other types of cancer may be linked to it. I mean, it makes it. sense. It's radioactive and radiation does tend to cause a lot of leukemia. So oh, if you yeah. get blasted with radiation, like from an atomic bomb, um, you are 
most likely to die from some type of leukemia. Yeah. Side note, did you ever have to read Sudoku and the Thousand Paper Cranes? No, I didn't. It's about this girl who gets blasted by radiation in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Okay. True story. Wow. And she, like in a Japanese like Shinto tradition, she thought if she could make a thousand paper cranes, she would survive. Aww. So she started making paper cranes and of course... That's so wholesome. I know. But sad. It's really sad. Yeah. I cried a lot when I read that in that like sixth so grade. That is so sad. Yeah. So there's something else to add to your list. Okay, yeah. That's not a movie. I don't think I could even watch it if it was. <laughs> oh, it's just a book. Okay, okay. A I'm going to have to yeah. look into that. That sounds like it's a really like a good book. You know, it's very thin. Yeah. Oh, so. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, but the evidence <laughs> for like the links into other cancers has been mixed. So it's not as strong as like they know for sure lung cancer, like for sure. But other types of cancer, they're not. It's, it's very mixed, mixed studies. So um, because radon is absorbed mainly by inhaling and because the radiation they give off travels only a short distance, it's unlikely that radon would affect other tissues in the body. So that's good. Yeah, it's because, you know, we're literally just inhaling it. You know, when you inhale, it just goes straight to the lungs, straight to the lungs. I think it's when you get blasted or you digest it that it causes the most. Oh, yeah. So if you ever watch Chernobyl, one of the things that happened to those guys is they kind of just melt. Like they walked away from it looking perfect and felt fine. And then like a week later, they just started like melting from the outside in. Ooh. And then, like, by the end, they're just, like, puddles of goo. That is so scary. Yeah. What the heck? There's also another movie. I'm sorry. I have so many radiation movies out there. <laughs> no. It's called K-19, The Widowmaker. Okay. And it has Liam Neeson and Harrison Ford in oh, it. Oh, Harrison Ford. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's total okay. daddies, both yep. of them. Yep. Um, and this is an old, another true story where a nuclear reactor melted down in a uh, Soviet sub. Yeah. And the crew had to go into the reactor, but they were not actually given proper radioactive um, uniforms yeah. to wear. So they had to wear the fire suit. So it was such a high um, rate of radiation. The guys that went in like would come out melting. Oh, yeah. You know, actually, I've seen this. There's a show that I, I used to watch. It's called The 100. And oh, I've heard of this. Yeah, there's actually like scenes where like some people were affected by radiation and they literally do start melting. Like, melting. And they're stuck in there. They just, they die. But yeah, it's dark. Radiation it is, dark. is so dark. I would never want to be affected by radiation ever. It is a scary thing. Well, I have bad news for you. We're inhaling radon right now. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Not in an intense amount, though. We're always exposed. I think radiation is something we're always exposed to as well. Yeah. So... Just not in big amounts. Yeah. I think, but small amounts of radiation can be good for you because that's also how they shrink cancer tumors. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, that's true. That's true. And also if you have, I don't know if they still do this, but in the old days, if you had thyroid, like um, Hashimoto's Mm -hmm. disease, is that what it's called? I think so. Thyroid disease. They'd plant radioactive pellets in your thyroid to keep it calm. That's cool. Yeah. So it can be helpful. It can be helpful. My stepdad had that. He had radioactive pellets. (gasps) Oh my God. Yeah. He lost all of his hair because of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you see like before or after pictures of him when he got it, because this was back in the 70s. Yeah. Um, he looks like a totally different person after he got it. Wow, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, yeah. But that's not what killed him. You want to know what killed him? Lung, well, lung cancer. Lung smoking. cancer. Yeah. Lung cancer. That's insane. Yeah, full circle there, <laughs> full right? Full circle, yep. So, so anyway, continue. So I'm going to say this again for the third time because <laughs> it really is important. Radon is the number one cause of lung cancer amongst non-smokers. Radon-induced lung cancer kills more than house fires and carbon monoxide combined. What? Combined. S- yes that's crazy that's insane so i I found some numbers it was like a a cute little like little circle graph (laughs) but yeah you know what i'm saying (laughs) cute but not cute yeah not cute but not you know you know what i mean (laughs) yeah so 2800 people died from home fires i'm not sure what the year was i'll probably have to go back and check um 3900 from drowning 21,000 from radon and 17,400 from drunk driving i'm surprised dry- drowning has such a low number yeah. i thought more people drowned yeah it's I- actually not that high yeah i mean it's higher than you know home fires but yeah yeah so radon kills more than even drunk driving which is crazy yeah that is really crazy drunk driving is like one of the things i'm truly terrified of oh yeah yeah people you got to be safe yeah you got to be safe we have uber call an uber 
or a lift if you have to i know like i would never get behind the wheel Mm -mm. like there's been times i'm you know i have my car at somebody's place and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna leave it here i'll come back for it tomorrow yep i'll just uber home because i'm not risking it no i don't even trust it's not worth it yeah it's not worth it it's not worth it and in texas they take your license like they're really really strict Mm -hmm. about it actually one of my friends obviously i won't say who i'm not trying to expose anybody (laughs) but um he did drive like drunk i guess it was enough like when he blew into the Mm -hmm. thing he was drunk they like suspended his license he couldn't drive for a while he had to get drug tested like every month and he and then whenever he could drive again before he even got into his car he would have to blow oh, into, into the, 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 breath the breathalyzer laser. into the ignition yep yep, yep. it's it's crazy it's, it's a and you serious know that thing can make your car blow up you have to sign a waiver saying you understand that it could call the cause the car to blow up oh my god that's yeah. crazy i know so yeah be safe do not ever drink while driving no we got to bring all these numbers down. Yeah. All these numbers you just listed, we got to bring all yeah, them yeah. all down. We want, we want to give them down to like, you know, zero. <laughs> listen, listen to the aluminum wiring for the house fires. Yes. Listen yes. to our pool episode about making sure your safety barriers mm-hmm. are done correctly on your mm-hmm. pool. Um, call an Uber if you're out partying. Yep, yep. And I'm about to talk about, I'm about to talk about <laughs> the radon detection. But if you live yeah. in Houston, don't worry about radon. Yeah, if you're in Houston, like us you don't have we to worry fine. about this yeah. one of the few things one of the few we're, things we're gonna die either in a chemical explosion yeah that just wipes us off the face of the earth <laughs> i still remember last year when that, <laughs> like, that happened that's almost like one year ago because yeah, one remember, year ago we were in new we orleans we talked about it on the yeah. podcast too because i remember i told you t- my roommate my old roommate literally like he was sh- shook <laughs> and he woke up like what is going on so yeah most likely deaths in houston chemical explosion that kills us all massive hurricane kills us all yeah flood kills us all yeah but right on right on we're good <laughs> nope <laughs> so what should i do if i've been exposed to radon which is a pretty good question that's an excellent question yeah so there are no widely available medical tests to measure whether you have been exposed to radon i guess specifically except for steve watros who walked through the geiger counter at work yeah how radioactive was that yeah dude? he must have been really like radioactive like to be I able to, to set google. that off i'm gonna google him while you keep talking i'm gonna see if he's still alive okay <laughs> stanley watros yeah yeah, so if you smoke and have been exposed to higher levels of radon, it's very important to try to quit smoking, okay? <laughs> Which is not an easy thing, of course. But the combined effects of c- cigarette smoking and radon exposure raise the risk of um, lung cancer much more than like if it was just exposure alone. Oh my God. When you Google his name, the first thing Google fr- puts up is, is Stanley Watcher still alive? I am not the only person to have Googled this. He is like legit famous. Is he still alive? Um, let me keep reading. Okay, okay. Oh my God. <gasps> As of 2015, they were still alive and still <gasps> living in the house that irradiated him. Wow. Good for you, Stanley. That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad, you know, he got through it because that's intense. I know. I'm sure that's like something he will never forget. I mean, he's Googleable. He, <laughs> is, he like pops up. <laughs> That's crazy. Right in it. I know. I'm, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but I got really excited. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's insane. It happened on December 2nd, 1984. Stanley J. Watrous, an engineer working on construction of the new Limerick nuclear power plant, arrived at work. <gasps> the crew had just installed radiation detector at the plant door. Thank God they did. Standard safeguard to ensure that nuclear workers don't exit the plant with any radioactive contamination on their body. But when he arrived that day, he set off the alarms on the detector as he walked into the plant. Over the following two weeks, he would set off the alarms every morning. They let this poor man. For two weeks? I thought it was just one day. Oh, my God. It was two weeks. Further investigation revealed that his clothes were contaminated with radiation that had picked up at his home. Wow. There was more radon radon gas in Watrous' house than was found in a typical uranium mine, nearly 20 times as much. (gasps) That is intense. I know. It was located on that Redding prong that we okay, talked about. Yeah, yeah. It's a geological formation full of, full of uranium deposits in the eastern United States. Holy. Yeah. That's that insane. That is, and as of 2015, he, he was, was still, still alive, alive with his wife living in the same house. That's crazy. I thought it was just one day that he walked in and they were like, oop, no, it was two whole weeks this man went to work. Stanley and Diane Waitress, they had to accept the fact that their stylish home was full of radiation. (laughs) Their stylish home. (laughs) Who wrote that? I know. Oh, my God. Oh, God. That's intense. So, guys, 
Here's another bet good headline from deadly minds to dangerous bedrooms. <laughs> That's a good one. That was a good one. That's yeah. A good title. Okay, finish up. Sorry, I keep That's interrupting you. So guys, if you Stanley's think Stanley's okay, everyone. Yeah, Stanley's okay. Stanley's he fine. survived. We don't have to worry about him. But if you think you might have been exposed to high levels of radon over long periods of time, talk to your doctor <laughs> about whether you should get regular health checkups and tests to look for possible signs of lung cancer i mean the earlier you catch it the better yeah they can actually remove parts of your lungs and you will still be okay yeah so be aware of possible symptoms of lung cancer such as shortness of breath or covid yeah a new or worsening cough or covid pain or tightness in the chest or covid (laughs) (laughs) hoarseness or trouble swallowing and guys do not you know don't don't be like one of those people that searches up your symptoms on google and think you're like about to die (laughs) get a covid test first yeah get a good get a corona covid19 test first and then maybe worry about that but you know talk to your you know don't look on the internet the best thing is to talk to a doctor who is qualified and will and will know hopefully what is going on yeah yeah (laughs) it adds another thing to our list is it is it flu is it cold is it allergies is it sinus is it carbon monoxide poisoning or is it Ur's mountain disease. Yeah, that's or so COVID. crazy. Yeah, or COVID. Yeah. So this is cool too. So for uranium miners, millers, and transporters who have certain health problems as a result of exposure to radon. Oh, oh we're going to pause for a second. Yeah. Our live just cut out. I think the camera might just... He didn't charge the camera. Okay, so we should turn the live off. It's still streaming. Okay. Is it still recording on? Yeah, it's still recording. Okay. We're still good on the recording. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll just repeat what I said. Start start with for from yeah. your, for so, your for uranium miners, millers and transporters who have certain health problems as a result of exposure to radon, the United States government has established the Radiation Exposure Compensation Program. So this program offers a lump sum payment to people with lung cancer and selected non-cancerous lung diseases if certain criteria are met. So if they get compensated for it, I guess that's a good thing, but... That's the mesothelioma thing too, isn't it? If you or a loved one have been yeah, exposed to exactly. asbestos, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the same type of fund. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think it's awful in our country that it's cheaper to pay people out than it is to fix things. And that's a good example of that. It's cheaper for the federal government to pay people's families out for deaths of loved ones than it is for them to actually enforce environmental regulation. Yeah, which is really sad because it's like if, if, if they it's made it's a huge effort, maybe it could just be like prevented or at least like lowered the amount of people that get affected by Stuff oh, that's like capitalism, that. though. I mean, yeah. Reddit, Reddit, do your thing. Reddit, please, come on. They're capable. We know that now. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right. Am I done interrupting you? Yes, yes. Okay. Now we, we will learn more about radon in yes, the Yes, you home. can interrupt me, too. <laughs> All right. Radon in the home. Now, this is an interesting thing. Uh, in Texas, we actually do have uh, some radon standards and practices, but it really doesn't apply to us, right? Because we yeah. live in Houston. Some northern parts of Texas might have radon the closer you get to Oklahoma. Yeah. I don't know how many basements are actually in Texas. I have a feeling most, if not all of them, are on the border with Oklahoma. Probably, probably the ones that are just like at the very top. The very, very tippy top. Um, I think we're also on the border with Arkansas. And Louisiana? Arkansas, yes, yes. So I've been to there Arkansas. might be some basements in those areas as yeah. well. I don't, maybe New Mexico, but I don't know if they have basements in New Mexico. Yeah, I don't know either. I what I'm like trying to not. say is they're not very common in Texas, but they're common enough or they happen enough that the Texas Real Estate Commission, excuse me, did actually put in some SOPs that said the home should be tested for radon if necessary. Um, But it's really not something your home inspector has to do. In fact, they can charge extra for it. Oh, so the basic radon testing kit, um, you can actually buy from uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. Oh, so you can even just go buy one if you really want to check. Yeah. Home should be tested for radon every two to three years if you're in a radon prone area. Okay. so here it doesn't matter. But if I lived in um, the Reading 
whatever that was yeah basin um you'd want to test your house every two to three years it's always going to pop positive but what you're looking for is how much is there yeah if it's like a, a high amount then you know you should be concerned but yeah. if it's low it's normal from my reading since i'm not totally well versed in this is um what they suggest is you do the diy kit first because it's only 25 bucks oh, okay, okay and you basically set out these two little tubes for two to three days and it has to be like in the darkest part of your basement or something like that and after two to three days you bottle it up and send it off for analysis uh -huh. and if the analysis comes back that the rates are high or elevated then you need to hire a professional okay radon detection agency and radon radon mitigation agency it seems like an easy thing to do at yeah. least like yeah. you just let it sit there for a few days and send it in yep so um, you can also have radon detectors in your house. So my brother has one in his house and basically it's a thing, uh, it's like a tube. And if the amount of radon gas goes past a certain level that's considered dangerous, it alerts him. Okay. So it's kind of similar to the carbon monoxide detector, right? Yeah. Like if it goes past a certain level, um, he knows that it's the radon is dangerous. Yeah. Um, it's in his basement, obviously it's in the utility part of his basement. And my brother lives in Ohio, by the way. So, okay. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to radon mitigation, it all depends on the type of foundation the home has. So essentially, there are, if you recall, the EPA used to regulate the training of radon mitigation specialists, and now mm -hmm. there's all those associations. Yeah. So someone does need to be licensed for radon mitigation, but I would always check your state because you each, each state is state. Yeah, it might be different. different. It might be different. But a radon mitigation professional should determine the type of mitigation system to install. And they might even conduct some additional diagnostic testing, depending on what type of um, foundation you have. So um, my friend lives in Virginia, not the Tidewater region, right? Yeah. Uh, she has a radon um, vent system. Oh, and basically it's a fan that continually pulls the air from the soil, the, the soil, the soil, the soil <laughs> and out through an exhaust pipe. So the pipe can either run inside or outside the home and it always discharges outside away from the windows and openings, which is interesting. It's that like a constant fan blowing through the house. Yeah. OK. It's like filtering it out. Yeah. Um, another thing is, uh, if the radon mitigation specialist comes into your basement and notices a lot of cracks or openings, they'll seal those. Sealing limits the flow of radon and makes the mitigation fan system much more efficient. Yeah, yeah. Because like we said earlier, if you do have cracks in the foundation, it could cause higher levels of radon. Yep. So there's three common types of radon mitigation systems. There's the sub slab suction, which pulls radon directly beneath the home's foundation and vents it outside. Like I said, yeah. there's the tile, excuse me, the drain tile suction is when a pipe penetrates into the drain tile and vents the soil gas outside. And then it has a special type of um, cover on it, essentially. You also have what's called a submembrane, which is used in crawl spaces. Um, a plastic sheet covers exposed dirt on the floor. The membrane extends up to the walls and is sealed. And then a pipe penetrates the plastic sheeting and pulls the gas from the crawl space to the outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. So some people don't even have basements. They yeah, have I want to reiterate, spaces. it would not be our crawl spaces. Yeah, it wouldn't be ours. It would be, It'd be someone else's. Okay. Because they do have beach houses up north. Yeah, they do have yeah, beaches. they have beaches like on, yeah. the, on the west coast. Yeah. yeah, and the east coast. Yeah, the east coast. Yeah. <laughs> I, meant, I meant to say east coast, my bad. And even they even have beaches <laughs> in Canada, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those beach houses would still need to have radon mitigation, even if they don't have basements. Yeah. So what about, um, let's go back to the home inspection real quick. Some states require, like I said, a separate license, um, and other states actually allow your home inspector to do it, but always ask. Yeah, questions. always check, always check. So the license inspector is going to use an active device that requires power to function and continually monitors radon levels. These devices are placed in the lowest level of the home that's used on a regular basement basis, which is usually the basement. For the best results, the testing advice should be set up in an open area. Remember, this is the professional radon detector, not the little tubes. Yeah. Placing it in a closet or other enclosed spaces may produce inaccurate results. So it has to be in a dark, open area. Using active electronic devices will not only prevent, but also detect radon test interference. So um, 
the inspector can ac accurately read the results. Electronic testing devices are also useful because they'll report any abnormalities or swings in radon levels, which can be caused by seasonal changes and other factors. So this is just a fancy radon detection machine, essentially yeah. is what I'm describing. So the interesting thing compared to the little tube test yeah. is the electronic radon testing machine um, it needs to be there. It can be a minimum of 48 hours. However, this is crazy. They prefer it to be there for 90 days. Three months? Yeah. And I don't really, I mean, if you know Radon, please contact us. Because I don't, I, I'm willing to bet that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. I bet most people do the short term. Yeah. I feel like that's that's a really long how, time. Yeah. How are you going to do a real estate sale yeah. if you're just waiting 90 that's, days? Yeah, that's that's a long time to wait. So oftentimes the long-term test is used to confirm a short-term test. So I guess I just answered my question. This is why I need to reread my script before. <laughs> it's okay. I... It's okay. Okay. So basically like if they get a result on the, on the, like the tubes, yeah. they might want to do the longer one the long just to, to be absolutely sure. Yeah. Okay. So any reading of four PCI over L, I don't know what that means. It's some kind of measurement. <laughs> some type of measurement uh, should result in repairs being made to the home. Okay. All right. Now, specifically, how to inspect the radon mitigation system. So you have a home inspector. He's done the radon test, but he also needs to inspect your radon mitigation system to make sure it's actually working. So that's like the little pipe. The and, vents. Yeah, the yeah. vents. Yeah. So it has to be clearly labeled. So this will avoid any um, people opening it or messing yeah, with it, yeah. not realizing what it was. The exhaust pipe of soil suction systems must vent above the surface of the roof and 10 feet or more above the ground and at least 10 feet away from windows, doors, or other openings that could allow the radon to re-enter the house if the exhaust pipe does not vent at least two feet above these openings. So some specificities there. Yeah, yeah. The exhaust fan must not be located in or below a livable area. For instance, it should not be in an unoccupied attic. Oh, excuse me. It should be in an unoccupied attic or outside, but not in the basement. So the exhaust fan for your radon should never be in your basement. Okay. So that goes in the attic. Yes. A YouTube tubeometer must be installed to alert you if the system stops working properly. That's what my brother has. The YouTube oh, okay. thermometer. So if the it's like, like a tube with like a little gauge. In okay. It. So if the venting system like happened to just stop working, they would know. Yes. Okay. A post mitigation radon test should be done no sooner than 24 hours after your system is in operation with the fan on and at least 48 hours. So if it does stop working, you need to run a test basically. Okay. And um, they need to know any uh, warranties that exist. So that's the inspection of the radon. I feel like that was a little confusing. A little bit. I mean, maybe it's more confusing for us because it's like we something no we don't deal with. Yeah. Like we don't. These are. This is just like SOPs like that. We're like on a reliable website. Yeah. So we don't have firsthand experience with the radon inspections. It was hard for me to talk about this because it's one of the few things I don't teach a class on. Yeah, yeah. Because like everything that else that we usually talk about on the podcast, like Mary has a class for it. She's done it. She's talked about it a million times. Radon is is, is a little bit newer, I it's guess. It's very new. Something we don't really talk, get to talk about much. Thankfully, next time we're talking about something. I know. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. So. I'm excited. <laughs> on that note, is it time for credits? It's time for credits. Our intro is Radon in Our Homes, The Science Behind the Danger, uh, spoken by Aaron Godzari for TED Talks. Nice. TED, TED Talks, Talks are good. Yeah. They're nice. Music credit is Kevin Cloud of Incontep. Source credit is the Virginia Department of Health, the Minnesota Department of Health, a academic article called The World History of Radon Measurement from the Early 1900s to Today by A.C. George, and the National Library of Medicine. Check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook and on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector. By the way, ECs, we have 4,000 followers on YouTube now. We did it! Yes! yes. It happened just in the hour before oh, uh, we started the I've podcast. I've been keeping an eye on it, and I'm like, we're so close. We're so close to 4,000, which just, is honestly insane, because last year we barely hit 1,000 around this time. I know. And we have tripled <laughs> tripled it. It's it's unbelievable. And I want to remind everyone that every time you watch a YouTube video, EC gets paid. So, so watch the videos. Watch the videos. <laughs> Not for me do it for me <laughs> <laughs> do it for ECs. do it for her dogs <laughs> for the dogs <laughs> um 
our next topic is pesticides. Oh, pesticides. Okay, that that's going to be an interesting one for sure. Something we know very well here in Houston. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To prepare for this, I want you to go, is it season two, WDIs, or in season two or season one? I think it might be season two. I, I, don't, I don't really remember. Maybe it's season one. I feel might like be that's one of the one. first things we okay. talked about. Go to season one and listen to our podcast on WDIs. Yep, wood destroying insects. Yes, and uh, so that, that way you'll be prepared. For yeah, next, you'll be prepared. For the next one. You'll be ready. It's going to be a good one. Yes. Until then, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And we look forward to talking to you about pesticides. Yes, yes. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs>